it's not just a running to, tool, it's a strengthening tool. And where do you need to strengthen your muscles? And you, you strengthen your muscles for sports and running. So it's a tool for sports and running. So we're, we're trying to target athletes in every sport, basketball, volleyball, football, soccer, where athletes need to be agile, fast, responsive, and to strengthen underutilized muscles quick twitch fibers, quick twitch muscles that help you to move laterally laterally faster, jump higher, move forward, backward. It's going to help you to become an overall better athlete. Hey, Chris, how are you? You are up and ready. You look all professional. <laughs> you should have wore something like you know, casual. Uh, I'm a small brand, so I'm trying to look better, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I was debating that. I, I was sitting up here like, you know what? We're going to just dive right into it and start going. So I'll do the introduction. So I, I want to make sure I get your name right. Shah Benamian. Pretty close. Good enough. Shah Benamian. Benamian. Okay. All right. So Benamian. All right. So I, I want to make sure I don't like messing up people's names, but I know I can say Shah just fine. Um, for you guys that because this is both podcast and video, I'll have to explain a little bit of what we're talking about and then we'll start getting into it. And I'll let you introduce yourself and explain to everybody, give everybody the socials, website, uh, where they can find the sneakers because this is a sneaker podcast with a little bit of food and other stuff, but primarily it's a sneaker podcast. So Sha is the creator of, and you know what, I'm going to let you say the name of the brand first, and then I'll start repeating it after you because I may have been pronouncing it wrong. So what's the name of the brand? Antipes. Antipes. So, that's right. And it stands for forefoot in Latin. Okay. All right. See, Look at that. I'm learning already. I probably knew it. It was on the website, I think. But, you know, I, there's a little bit of oversight. But Antipes, there are so many new brands, so many new brands. Every week you get somebody else that's making a shoe because they hooked up with someone on Taobao or some random Chinese website and they're making a shoe. All of these shoes have the same thing in common. They serve absolutely no purpose. There's only one other brand that I think that's been started in the last few years that's comparable to yours, and that is 99 Products. And 99 Products was founded by Jeff Henderson, and he makes a, a running shoe with a full-length carbon fiber plate. But yeah, look into that. that's where the comparison stopped, though. You are the only brand created in the last six years with a definitive purpose. That's a big statement. I like that. I, man, you know, <laughs> I cover shoes. This is what I do. I am not exaggerating. It's an honest fact. You can see the shoes back here behind me. Those are my daughter's pairs. I have mine on right now. But here is the thing. When most people create a sneaker brand, it's for vanity purposes. It's because they want to make something cool. And they want to make something that looks good and they want to make it for fashion. It's not functional. And see behind you, you have your shoes on the wall. You have look like samples back there, that navy blue that's over there. You know, you've made a shoe, the muscle runner, that I think actually does what the, the film robots, Robin Williams, rest in peace. I love the film robots. My son used to watch it when he was a little kid. And in that film, he talked about seeing a need and filling a need. If you're going to introduce a new product, if you're going to introduce anything new that people have to buy, it better serve a purpose because every other brand is already in the space that you're sitting in. If you're a new company, you are the only person sitting in this space with a tool as a sneaker. Now, there's a ton of sneakers, and I know I'm running over. Uh, there's a ton of sneakers that you can run in. You can do all of these different things. But I feel when I show people the shoes, the first thing they do, and I'm holding a shoe in front of me. For you guys that are listening to this on the YouTube podcast and you can't see it, the shoe looks like a track spike. 
it looks like a, when you look at it from first glance, it looks like a track spike without the spikes. It sits a little bit higher, and that means your feet are basically already in a dorsiflex position, just like when you're wearing a track spike. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But like I said, I don't want to go overboard. I want you to introduce yourself because we need to dive into this. This is going to be more or less an idea session where you get introduced to the brand. If you're listening, you get introduced to Antipes. You get introduced to Shaw and you get used, you get introduced to what is an idea factory because small brands, the biggest problems that small brands have, are, um, is really it comes down to being able to bounce ideas off of someone and to put those ideas into action. So um, I want, Sha, I want you to introduce yourself to everyone, give them all of your socials, and we're going to do this again at the end of the video to make sure that everybody has it. Because, like I said, it's the first sneaker that's been created that actually fills a need and serves a purpose. Please introduce yourself. Well, thank you again for the introduction. That, with the big statements, I really appreciate that. Those are really kind words, and I appreciate you loving the shoes. So the brand, my name, again, my name is Shaw Benamian, and I'm the owner and founder of Antipes, A-N-T-E-P-E-S, with the same handle for Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube and our website is A-N-T-E-P-E-S dot com, Antipes dot com. So uh, please look us up, look us up. And this is the shoe in Hawaii Ocean colorway. And this is the one in light spectrum colorway. That's the so one the, I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this, I came up with the idea a few years back because um, I, I'm, a, I'm an avid runner. I used to run all my life. I used to play soccer growing up and I always ran. And then when I, started running a little bit too much and I pushed myself a little bit too much. I started having foot problems on my right foot. I started wearing, uh, growing a bone spur along the uh, small metatarsal on my right foot. And that really didn't go away for two years until I started running on my forefoot. And after two years, finally, I started running on my forefoot and the pain went away. The bone spur went away. And then I started looking into the market and see if I can find forefoot specific running shoes, but I couldn't. And it took two more years for me to fully dedicate myself and my time to making this shoe. And then finally I launched the brand in 2020 and started making the uh, muscle runners. And what, what is very unique about the shoe is that the forefoot cushioning is thicker than the cushioning under the heel. So there's a difference of 10 millimeters of cushioning as compared to the forefoot cushioning and the cushioning under the heel. So you're, as you mentioned before, uh, as soon as you put the shoes on, you'll be, you're going to, get into a dorsiflexion of about 10 to 15 degrees. So uh, that dorsiflexion, that helps you to actually run and stay on the forefoot. And it encourages you, encourages you to use forefoot strike. So when you're actually uh, stri stri striding forward, trying to strike the ground, it the heel being thinner and elevated, the setup is similar to a, to a spike shoe. So the heel is elevated and thinner, it's gonna be hard to heel strike. So the forefoot automatically, or in most cases, unless you're really striding far forward, you're gonna hit the ground with the forefoot. And then you're gonna mostly try to stay on the forefoot to get the maximum uh, effect in your calves and lower leg muscles. But you can also lower the, uh, lower the heel down if the intensity is too much. But the idea behind it is to stay on the forefoot as much as you can to strengthen your lower legs and joints. So the mm, biggest effect here is that the forefoot cushioning is thicker by 10 millimeters. And then it, it the cushioning is aligned along the uh, ball of the foot. Right. So it's aligned along along the ball of the foot. So you get the same effect on each side of the foot, on the lateral side and the medial side. So you feel that cushioning falling right below the uh, ball of the foot. So it starts about 45 millimeters behind the ball of the foot, but it stays the same until the ball of the foot. So the cushioning, I mean, it looks like it's curving down, but it's the same w uh, w thickness from right. about 45 millimeters behind the ball of the foot until the ball of the foot. And then the four foot rocker starts kicking in. Now, one thing that uh, I think a lot of people may not recognize underneath, under the foot, you can clearly see a carbon fiber plate. Sure. So it helps with propulsion. It helps with Definitely. rebound. But I'm going to tell you, it's hard to get used to running in this thing. Of it's hard. It 
I mean, and I I run. I'm a four foot striker, but I'm a 235 pound guy. I'm a big dude, and a lot of the stuff that I do is primarily sprints because I work out with my daughter. To run longer distances, it taxes your legs, and it builds your the strength in your legs. But it also can get you to a point where you're like, hold on, you know what? I might have to take these off for a second. I may not run a full, you know, 5K, 10K, you know, half marathon. I may not run that in these shoes, even though you can run it in those shoes doing a four foot strike. But for more novice runners, people that are not, I get into these conversations on LinkedIn with people who are really professional runners. These guys, they wear the running shoes. They get the carbon fiber plates. They run 10 Ks and half marathons and marathons. And they will say immediately that you can't use a shoe like this for extended periods of time. And that's not true. You simply have to get used to it. So how would a person that's approaching this shoe, how would they begin to get used to the way it performs how do you do that first i tell everybody you gotta you gotta get started easily you this is not a shoe you can just hop into and run a 10k on the first day you put them on walk around in them get used to the cushioning setup because you're you if you're not striking correctly you try you find yourself trying to climb out of that dorsiflexion when you walk so I always recommend run only a half a mile to see where you're standing. Okay. Then do a mile, then do two miles. Because even if you do a half a mile or a mile, it's going to take you five minutes or maybe a half a mile to get used to the setup because it's so different from everything is on, everything else on the market. You're going to have to get used to four foot striking naturally, lifting your leg the proper way because you probably uh, most likely have to get into that A skip stride. So you, it looks like it might look like you're doing an A skip, but it's just helping you to lift your knee because you're going to have to lift your knee when you're running because when you do that A skip, you going to automatically land right under the center of your mass. So for these shoes to work properly, you're going to need to get used to landing right under the center of your mass when you're running. So you land about right here in the midfoot section along the cushioning. Right. So I can't see with the camera, but right here. <laughs> so you land right here. And then uh, you can lower, look, you can lower your heel to get started just to get the feel. And then, then you're going to transition to just staying on the midfoot on four foot. So it takes about half a mile, five minutes or so to get used to the setup. But once you get used to the setup, you learn how to optimize your stride for the four foot cushioning by right. lifting you, uh, by picking up your knees. Then it's going to feel very natural natural and you're going to get used to it but you're not going to you're still not going to be able to run a 10k because you might not have the calf strength you might not have the leg strength the joint strength because this shoe will will help you to grow calf muscle leg muscle strengthen your joints because when your muscles are working, your jo your tendons are working too. So you have to be careful about both. You have to get get started slowly to strengthen both your muscles and tendons and the legs. Now that takes us into a completely different direction. Um, you're explaining some things about fitness and running. When I got the shoes and I began testing the shoes, my immediate reference point, because I was a high school basketball coach and a junior college recruiter. So, I, you know, I worked with basketball my whole life, except for when I started running the website as a consultant and doing these other things. The moment I got the shoes and I started running in them and I started working out in them, my entire concept of what the shoe was switched. So changing from a discussion on how to run in the shoes to what these shoes can be utilized for. The biggest problem that a new shoe company has is finding the consumer. Right now, your shoe is direct to consumer, primarily. That's not going to be a broad enough scope because you have to, and this is a business discussion now. I'm, I'm switching lanes into a business discussion. The, the, well, the use of the shoe, what it can be used for, and the business aspect of finding that consumer, 
you can do TikTok videos, you can have influencers do different things. But when you're first starting out and building a brand, you have to find customers in as many places as possible. Do you have a strategy beyond simply connecting with influencers? Is there a strategy for finding that business consumer? And if not, how do you think you can begin to find those consumers? Well, starting with that, we would have to uh, focus down on our target audience. Like you mentioned, these are uh, these were created as a running shoe, but then not with, with running in mind. But then they're not only for runners because they're a strengthening tool. They're a strengthening tool for muscles and tendons, which trans translates to joints. So when you're strengthening your joints and muscles, then it's not just a running to tool. It's a strengthening tool. And where do you need to strengthen your muscles? And you, you strengthen your muscles for sports and running. So it's a tool for sports and running. So we're, we're trying to target athletes in every sport, basketball, volleyball, football, soccer, where athletes need to be agile, fast, responsive, and to strengthen underutilized muscles, quick twitch fibers, quick twitch muscles that help you to move laterally laterally faster, jump higher, move forward, backward. It's going to help you to become an overall better athlete. It's, it's the issue is meant to make you a better athlete, not just a better runner. Because some people just look at this shoe and say, it's a running shoe. This is not, I'm not gonna be, a, uh, be able to run a marathon. And we tell them it's not a marathon running shoe. It's a tool for you to train to become a marathon runner if you want to run a marathon yeah. or help you to become a better athlete. But it's a training tool that is supposed to fit into your shoe rot rotation and not to replace your shoes. It's only supposed to complement your sho shoe rot rotation and help you uh, add another tool to your you know toolbox. Yeah. So we are trying to uh, reach out to as many out uh, outlets as we can, but we are obviously a small brand, uh, limited to many resources, but we're trying to reach out to as many out uh, outlets as we can and uh, work with influencers, work with uh, physical therapists, because uh, we get a lot of interest from physical therapists uh, telling that they want to get the clients off, their, off of the heel and they want to transition them into forefoot striking. And this would be a tool that could help them. So, I mean, we don't want to say it's just a medical tool because it's not a certified, a certified, a certified medical tool. I mean, right. obviously it's not, it's a running shoe, training shoe, but athletes can use this to become a better runner, better athlete and overcome injuries. But then again, you have to be careful. You don't want to overdo it because this is a very muscle intensive tool. Right. Right. So, so for now that, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, you know, with that, with the shoe, the way it's designed, I love the fact that you're saying that it's a training tool. I really like the fact that you said it's not certified for me to say that it's going to do all of these different things because a lot of people come in and they make a claim about something. And when you make a claim, that's where the running community or the training community, that's where they kind of tear you down as a company. That's not, it's not going to do all of those different things. I've been in this shoe for about two to three months and I use it as a supplemental tool, uh, specifically on days when I'm doing plyometrics. And my daughter is a high jump athlete. So it's extremely important for us to work on plyometrics. So the idea of trying to find that audience and that community, it, it gets really tough as a small brand because the budget isn't really there. So it gets harder to find that community. I have a little bit of a suggestion. And that's in the fact that when I saw the shoe and when I tried it, and then when I started using it on a jump box, when I started doing, you know, just a, a lot of toe raises, uh, A skips, B skips, um, run one, two, three, you know, jump with your foot, those flex. These things are much, much more difficult in the shoes, but my stability is improved overall. Working out with my daughter, my stability is improved. My legs are getting stronger. I watched this guy on YouTube called Knees Over Toes, right? And he's the Knees Over to Toes guy. 
And he's like, when you squat, go ahead and go all the way down and get your knees over your toes. Because for so long as an athlete, I was told, keep your legs 90 degrees when you squat. Don't allow your knees to go over your toes. I was told that for years that that would damage my knees. Now that I'm older and I'm trying to train my daughter and I'm working with track and field athletes, not basketball players anymore. And I realize how important it is to stay on the balls of your feet. I'm like, this shoe is a fantastic tool. Is Are there any programs that you are currently thinking about implementing? Any programs? And this is going back to my question about how are you going to reach the athletes? Are you considering doing plyometric camps? No weights, no weights, strict plyometric camps. 10 to 15 athletes talk with coaches. Give coaches a team discount where they can go on the site, find a page, get a team discount to buy 10 to 15 pair of shoes for basketball players, for volleyball players. Have a routine set up where locally, I'm not even talking across the country right now unless somebody wants to do it. And then you can build out like sections of your website to do video training tutorials on YouTube. Are you thinking about doing something like that or did I just give you a new idea? The camp was definitely a new idea. I did not think about the camp, but it sounds like a great idea. And we do supply our customers with a training guide. So we do the 30 workouts uh, training guide a guide that we have for our athletes. So as soon as you purchase the shoes, you get a full training guide of 30 workouts and drills that you can perform with the shoes that and the uh, shoes help you to perform those workouts with proper form by keeping you on your forefoot so every workout that you do with our shoes you're supposed to stay on your forefoot because it, the shoes make it easier for you to, for you to stay on your forefoot and when you stay on your forefoot when you where you're doing the jump boxes or if you're doing uh, lunges or, you know, not so heavy uh, squats, but if you're doing your, even doing squats, if you stay on your forefoot, you're going to work on your stability. If you do your jump boxes with a forefoot focused routine, it's going to help you to work those stability muscles to improve the, your stability and strengthen the underutilized muscles and strengthen the quick twitch muscles as well. So just working out in our shoes after a couple workouts, you're gonna see a huge difference. And I'm not just over exaggerating because you, you do no, you're see not. a big difference. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're not. That's not an exaggeration. And it, it could be like, hey, they're just doing this thing to sell some stuff. That's not, I'm telling you, I don't do a lot of heavy weights because I'm a big guy already. I don't need to bulk up anymore. I'm getting older, it's getting harder for me to cut weight. So I don't bulk up anymore. But your shoes, when I do a squat, I typically use body weight now, or I'll use uh, dumbbells, side hang, dumbbells, deep squats. Uh, when I do cleans, I tend to use a flat, harder shoe that's not, you know, like this, that keeps my forefoot elevated. But I kid you not, man, simply utilizing body weight, wearing the shoes, my stability has improved 100%. When I first got the shoes, I couldn't squat without wobbling. So I would go down into my deep squat and I'd start to wobble because the shoes really force you to kind of stay on your toes. But then I was started I started dropping my heel, which means that my foot was slightly dorsiflex and I would drop and then it started making my lower back pop. Now, that's not saying that it's going to be a chiropractic fix. But there's like these little small things that are starting to kind of repair themselves in conjunction with the knees over toes, with the shoes, it really works. But when I'm thinking about these 10 to 15 man camps, right, and or woman camps or person camps, when you get into this process of when I had my basketball shoe company, right, I had 1,200 shoes I made. 1200. I know you know what this pain is. They were in my garage piled up. We could not park in the garage anymore. These shoes are piled up. And I was already doing um, recruiting videos for basketball players. So I started hosting camps and I built the cost of the camp around the training aspect of it, getting highlight video for the athletes getting the training and the, get the full gameplay 
And then I would record it and I would put it online so college coaches could see these basketball players. But I put the cost of the shoe into the camp. So when the player came in, they got a T-shirt and they got a pair of sneakers and then they got a recruiting video. I did all of these different things. I went through those 1,200 shoes like that. So I was like, okay, Antif is going to have to find their audience. And that's not an easy task. The temporary benefit of an influencer is it's momentary. Once that video is done, after about 24 to 48 hours, it cycles through and the influencer moves on to another thing. So you lose the spacing for that video to be seen. But if you're a locally known brand and let's say you go to um, an Iron Tribe or a CrossFit gym and they are obviously going to want to work out with um, what are the shoes from Nike? I can't even remember the name of it, but they work out with these really flat shoes or the no bull really flat trainers. However, if you can coordinate with a CrossFit gym to do a a branded plyometric camp at a CrossFit gym or a branded plyometric camp at a basketball facility with a group of people, put the cost of the shoe into that camp. People get the shoe and boom, you start moving it through the camps. People will be videotaping those things and they'll become your audience and they'll help out with the process of selling them. Now that that I've got you sitting here kind of looking because I'm talking this business side of it because uh, it, when you have something that's this nice, that really works, when you have something that works like this, I'm the first person to say people should try it, but it could be cost prohibitive. So what do you do? Even though most shoes that you have with a carbon fiber plate, uh, Nikes are 275, Hoka's 275, 250. Every shoe that has a carbon fiber plate is above $250, except for the 99 product shoe where it's $120, but it doesn't perform in the same way. So when you have a shoe like this and the retail price is X amount of dollars, which I want you to give us the retail price of the shoe um, and then kind of explain why it is that way. But what I'm trying to get at, and I'm rambling a little bit, I apologize is the justification for buying it. I know the justification as a basketball coach and now as a track dad, I know the justification for getting my daughter a pair of these shoes. They work. They help her to get a lot stronger as she forefoot strikes because the quicker she can have a turnover that her feet are not resting on the ground and her full foot isn't touching the ground, the faster she can move down the track when she's running her sprints. So she's going from being a high jump person two running sprints now doing the 200 and 400 meter hurdles. So 300 meter hurdles for high school. I know the benefit of it, but the pricing of the shoe, if people think it's prohibitive, please explain to them why they should consider it. And understanding that, yeah, price is a lot, but you'll pay 200 bucks for a Jordan that came out in 1989 but you want to become a better athlete. And sometimes you don't have a weight room to go to. And I'm probably taking your answers. And so I'm going to stop talking and leave you, ask you this question. If people feel that the price is prohibitive, you explain what they get when they get the shoe, but tell them why the cost of the shoe, what it's for, and explain that and tell them that they shouldn't fret or worry. Thank you for the introduction again, but uh, you're completely right. The shoes are not cheap. They are expensive. They are above $20. And originally we wanted to price them even higher because it costs us so much to make these shoes. People don't understand how expensive it is for a startup to bring a new product to the market. And we have another brand. There's another brand, another startup that is selling their shoes at $375 or $350 because it's so expensive to make a new innovative shoe. So this shoe is, there's nothing like it on the market, right? Obviously. I mean, the forefoot is sticking in the back. I mean, the design, everything behind it, everything is brand new from scratch. So to create a shoe like this, it just costs that much money. And 
you what you're getting with these shoes is a comfortable, thick, durable upper, which is 30% merino wool, 30% tensile, 30% nylon for stability and strength, 10% uh, spandex for the stretchability in the tongue. And we have uh, 80% tensile laces with biodegradable, uh, biodegradable lace tips. And we have a natural rubber-based outsole. It's a thick outsole, so you can take the shoe. Via, uh, I'm glad you like the insole. The the natural rubber based outsole is very grippy. Grippy. It's thicker than uh, most running shoes outsoles because this shoe you can take on the trail as long as the trail the trail is uh, is not too rocky because you don't want to step on big rocks with a shoe like this. But uh, it's meant for trail and the road, and it's going to give you a lot of mileage. And the plate is completely new because in the forefoot it's in the midsole, is embedded in the midsole. We have a softer uh, upper layer midsole that to make the landing a little bit smoother or more cushioned landing, but the lower midsole is harder, slightly harder because when you're landing on your forefoot, you don't want your uh, forefoot, your foot to move around. You want that stability. That's why the lower midsole is a little bit harder because to give you stability when you sh strike on your forefoot. So, but the top layer is a little bit softer to give you a comfortable landing. And in the back, the uh, carbon fiber plate lays on the top surface, right under the um, midsole and the strobo board, okay. uh, insole, right? Right under the insole and the strobo board. And uh, and we have this other innovative part of the shoe, which is the helix, which helps to lower the back of the upper. So the, the upper in the back is about five millimeters lower than every almost every other running shoe on the market. So we're trying to reduce that friction of the upper against the Achilles. So by doing that, we needed to introduce the helix technology to grab your heel from the sides to reduce the friction against your Achilles. So this is also very innovative and new, and there's nothing like it in the market. Helps you grip, uh, grip on, uh, hold on to your ankle and lower the friction against your Achilles. And also the back, you can actually, with this shoe, you can actually lower your heel down and rest. And if you're going downhill, you have a flat surface in the back, so you, it gives you extra traction for braking if you need to brake when you're going downhill. And that is lined up with the ball of the foot. So that, that was also very tricky because the cushioning, as you can tell, it's farther into the front on the medial side and it's farther back on the lateral side. And to engineer how the back is flat and grips at the same time with both locations, that was also very hard to figure out and took us a lot of testing. So there are a lot of little design cues that you don't see, you can't really tell until you try out the shoe because the shoe is so different. Everything had to be re-engineered from, from ground up. So that's why this shoe costs what it costs. It costs $225. And to be honest, we wanted to price it higher. This is as low as we could go with yeah. this market because I mean, right now, 2023, the market is not as good as 2021. So we have to be uh, you know, more economical with yeah. that. But the shoe has a full length carbon fiber plate, uh, very responsive, very high performing EVA midsole. We have durable rubber out outsoles. We have a very eco-friendly, comfortable, durable upper, the laces, 80% tensile. So everything for the shoe is of highest quality. So there, there is nothing in the shoe that you could say it was made cheaply. This is a high-end shoe to help you to become a better athlete, and it will last you a long time. Especially, you won't be running marathons on this because some people say, "Hey, why would I buy this shoe? I can't run a marathon in this." I'm like, I, uh, "Is that what you're looking for? If that's what you're looking for, then you should go buy a marathon shoe." shoe. But yeah, this shoe, yeah, and a marathon <laughs> shoe breaks down much faster. You can really only wear a marathon shoe for the marathon, and then you toss it. So when you pay. $275 for a marathon shoe, like a Vaporfly 3%, you know, next 3%. You wear that for that marathon and then you have to literally toss it and you can recycle it with a company. But with this shoe, it's a true training tool. And I remember specifically my basketball players buying jump soles and not a shot at jump soles, but those things are ugly as death. They are terrible. They're big, bulky with a strap. 
and you have to you look like you're clunking around the school just so my players they wanted to do toe raises so they could dunk this is a shoe that functions exactly in the same way but it looks better you can wear it casually you can wear it around and i i find myself throughout the day probably doing about 100 to 200 pair of calf raises when i'm just wearing a shoe walking around because the shoe just naturally makes you want to do calf raises you know so it's one of those things where it's one of the products that it's the only product and i'm going to repeat this because we're going to get ready to wrap up we're going to get ready to wrap up i I love the conversation i'm going to repeat this it's the only shoe that i've seen that's been created by a brand that serves a true purpose it feels a need and it works so what i want to do before we wrap up here is I want to make sure you give us those socials again. So if somebody listened to the beginning, uh, then we got the socials in. Somebody listens to to just the end, we get the socials in. Um, I love your explanation for why the shoe costs what it does, because many of the times brands will put something out and there's no rhyme or reason or logic. To open a mold for a shoe, one size is around $3,000. People need and to, to make understand a whole that. shoe, the molds can be up to $20,000 per size. Per size. And we have 14 sizes per colorway. We have 14 different sizes. So each set of molds for making one shoe can be up to 20, up to 20, 20 grand. And people in, molds. I'm thinking 20 years ago, it was 3000 when I made my basketball shoe. That was 2004, 2005. When I made my running shoe, it was 2009. So I'm thinking 20, I forget that the price has gone up considerably. So it's important for people to understand that the cost, everything is factored in. Your shoe does not cost much, especially as a training tool. If you're a person that has a gym and you want to do body weight exercises, it's an amazing tool. So we're going to get ready to wrap it up. Uh, and I we want... give you another tool. I don't know if you mentioned a, a massage roller, but you get another tool with the shoes. So the shoes come inside of the massage roller. So that's how you receive the shoes inside of the massage roller. So And the massage roller is also for you too, because we have a hard surface and we have a soft surface. The soft surface are for, for tissues that are more sensitive and anything besides the calves and the heart surface is for the calves because that really gets to the fascia in the legs there is no way in the world i would have done that for first shoe release (laughs) that that's crazy that is the value a foam roller costs 50 dollars. a cheap one period a cheap one a good one can be upwards of 200 bucks a good foam roller in some instances man you have put together a great package. I, I, I think this is something that people need to know about as a new brand. So I, I think I'm going to carry this conversation to the website. I've written about it before. I'm going to carry it to the website, talk about it a little bit more, share this on the YouTube, share it on LinkedIn. But please give us your socials one more time and let's go ahead and wrap this up. Give us your socials, where to go to purchase this fantastic product, the Muscle Runner from Antiques. Please take us home. Yep. Please go to our website, A-N-T-E-P-E-S dot com, Antibes dot com. Our social media handles are all the same, mostly. It's at A-N-T-E-P-E-S, at Antibes for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I think for uh, Twitter, it's Antibes Running. But follow us and you know join the muscle running community you won't regret it it's a great muscle uh, muscle enhancing tool we give you the shoes we give you the roller we give you everything you need the training guides and uh, please spread the word and again thank you for having me thank you for uh you know thank hosting you for joining me. this I- and the podcast is amazing your content is amazing i've been following you for some time now i love your videos on youtube <laughs> i love your site it's so informative i mean uh we don't really have a lot of people like you, to be honest, uh, that put out really the knowledge that nobody else is putting out about the sneaker industry, apparel industry, the pretty much the athletic industry. You're an expert that I've personally learned from a lot. So I stop really appreciate it, you. Stop it, stop it, stop <laughs> it, stop it. It's Thank true. You. I, I'll you. accept that. I'll accept that. But stop it. 
That was Shaw with Antibes. Visit the site. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you later, brother. Take it easy. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.